praise God this morning for reminding us of the need to expect a miracle every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you for uh, tuning in to join us for worship this morning at Lee Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, we don't take it for granted that you have other options and a multitude of choices when it comes to the worship experience. That's why we always want to make sure we pause and say thank you for choosing uh, to worship with us this morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. to worship this morning. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For they have hope that in the house. I will rather be the in the house of my God than the dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Those who turn in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of thy God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, O Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is a holy temple, and all the earth is silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he is a marvelous thing. Make a door of noise to the Lord, all the earth sing praise. Amen. Opening hymn this morning is hymn number 95. <laughs> Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O thou of God and man the Son, thee will I cherish, thee will I honor, thou my soul's joy, glory, and crown. Without further lining, let us sing opening hymn number 95, Fairest Lord Jesus.
God for that reminder of how much fairer indeed our Lord Jesus is. Let us prepare our hearts and minds now for our morning prayer. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, O thou of God and man, the Son. We come, O God, this morning thanking you for this day, God. Thanking you, Lord, for touching our bodies and quickening our spirits. Thanking you, Lord, for one more day to live out your calling on our lives. Thank you, God, for watching over us as we slept last night. Thank you, God, for watching over us as we traveled highways with rainstorms, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. Thank you, God, for all that you have done in our lives. We come, oh God, also thanking you for hearing our prayers. Thank you, God, for the whispers that we uttered, God. Thank you, God, for when we were on our knees, God, crying out in anguish, Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you, God, for healing that you are sending to those who are sick. We thank you, God, for deliverance that you are bringing to those who are in desperate situations. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your comforting Holy Spirit, God, that gives us ease, Lord, as we go through difficult situations. God, we, we could spend all day thanking you for everything you've done in our lives. And indeed, oh God, you are worthy of our thanksgiving and our praise. So God, we come again saying thank you and asking, oh God, that you will continue to shape our hearts and minds that they may be directed toward doing your will. Remove, oh God, thoughts of negativity. Remove, oh God, thoughts of selfishness. Remove, oh God, anything that is not consistent with your will. Allow us, oh God, to start transformation with ourselves, oh God. Allow us, Lord, to, to start with home, oh God. Allow us, oh God, to, to begin with ourselves as we begin to change this world. Allow us, oh God, to first start with ourselves. Help us, oh God, to become what you have created us to be. Strengthen us, oh God, as we go along the journey. Is our prayer in your son, Jesus Old Testament and New Testament scriptures this morning uh, will be coming from the book of Exodus and Ephesians. Our Old Testament scripture comes from Exodus 16, verses 2 through 4, and verses 9 through 15. Exodus 16, verses 2 through 4, and 9 through 15. And I invite you to follow along with us as we're reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Let us hear the word of the Lord. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. 
verse 9. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. We thank God for the reminder of God being a provider and for God meeting all of our needs. Amen? Amen. Our New Testament scripture comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4, verses 1 through 16. Let us also hear the word of God uh, from the New Revised Standard Version. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it said he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. Mm -hmm. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, <coughs> some pastors and teachers to equip, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speak the truth in love. We must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Amen. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his most holy word. From all that dwells below the skies, let the greatest praise arise. the words of Christ our Savior when he was asked what is the greatest commandment and he said to him you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart 
with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, this now and ever shall be, world without end. remain standing, standing as we reaffirm our faith by repeating the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us now prepare our hearts and our minds for a wonderful selection from our choir.
Amen. We give God praise and thanksgiving again, reminding us uh, that he thought so much of us Amen. that he would die for us. Amen. Yes. The Bible says that very rarely would one die for a righteous person. But at the right moment, uh, Jesus died for the unrighteous. He died for those of us who were yet sinning against him. We give God praise and thanksgiving for his sacrifice. Amen? Amen. Uh, our scripture text this morning uh, comes from Ephesians chapter number 4, verses 4 through 16. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 16. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and I invite you to read along with me if you have your Bible. There is one body and one spirit just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive, he gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who also descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. May the Lord again bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come once again thanking you for this opportunity, God. An opportunity, Lord, to hear from you. A chance, O oh God, for your word to permeate our hearts and our minds. Bless us, O oh God. Strengthen us, O oh Lord, that we may hear your word, that it may transform and change us so that when we have completed our worship service today, we indeed will be different than how we were when we started. This, O oh God, is our prayer in your son, Jesus the Christ, name. Amen. Amen. For just a few moments, we want to look at this fourth chapter of Ephesians, verses 4 through 16, and focus on this theme, how to build the body of Christ. How to build the body of Christ. God has created us to be both an individual and part of a collective. By his sacrifice of his life, that collective called the body of Christ was created. Uh, when Jesus was dealing with uh, trying to teach the Israelites about his life and his sacrifice, he oftentimes talked about the tearing down of his body and the rebuilding of it back up. More than that, he told the disciples that he was going to build his church and that the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Yeah. This body of Christ is both his physical body and the spiritual body. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we become part of that body. But most of us stop there. Not because we don't want to do more, 
but often because we don't know that we can do more or how we can do more. The church in Ephesus was experiencing some of those same challenges, and Paul gave them and gives us some solutions for how we can build the body of Christ. The first thing that Paul tells us is that we can equip people for service. Verse 12 says, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Each of us has a unique opportunity to help someone else get better at being a Christian. We can help each other in so many ways, and one of the easiest to do is help them become equipped for service. Notice how Paul lists the different types of positions that God created in order to provide an opportunity for everyone to work in the body. Some he called to be pastors. Others he called to be evangelists. And others still he called to be teachers. Now, everybody can't be a pastor. But that's not meant to limit anybody's calling. It just simply doesn't make sense. If everybody's a pastor, who's going to be in the congregation? If everybody's going to be the pastor, who's going to be in the choir? If everybody's going to be the pastor, who's going to be the usher? If everybody's going to be the pastor, who's going to be the audio team? If everybody's going to be the pastor, who's going to be the steward? If everybody's going to be the pastor, who's going to be the trustee? Who's going to be the missionary? Who's going to be the college missionary? So everybody cannot be the pastor. But he says this, everybody can be an evangelist and a teacher. Last Wednesday in Bible study, we talked about what role we can play in each other's lives. We can add to the bricks of their spiritual building or we can take away from it. When we help others grow closer to God, we are adding bricks to their building. When we treat them in a negative way, we are removing bricks from their building. Yesterday's lesson in Sunday school was about the fact that everybody can be saved. But the question that Paul asked is, how are they to call upon one in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe the one that they have not heard about? And how can they hear unless someone is sent to proclaim the word? So everybody can proclaim God's word. Everybody can tell somebody about who God is. And as we discussed this in, in Sunday school yesterday, we said, listen, let's be clear. You can't always wait on the pastor to show up when somebody needs to hear about God. You can't always say, well, hold on, let me pull the video up from last Sunday. Listen to this. We pulled the Bible so that from last Wednesday. No, sometimes you got to be the one teaching, which means that you got to read, and you got to study, and you got to show up to be taught, and you got to show up so God can reveal to you what God wants you to tell somebody else because you can equip people for service even one person at a time. When Jesus sent his disciples out, he sent them out to evangelize people. And they were supposed to be engaging in equipping people. They were equipping others for service. They were giving people what they needed to go out and give of themselves to the world. The world needs more givers and fewer takers. The world needs more people who give of themselves, who self-sacrifice. More people who will give more than take. The world needs more Simone Biles who will say, listen, you go and be the star today. You go and be the champion today. I was the champion four years ago. You go and shine today. We need more folks to say, I'll step back and you go forward. We need more people to equip others for service. We need more teenage boys to protect our girls from other boys that would seek to make them feel worthless by calling them names other than the name their parents gave them. We need friends who don't mind looking out for someone who might be a victim of domestic violence but is afraid to tell somebody. We need co-workers to help the new employee do their best at their job and not see them as a threat to themselves. We need people to equip others for service so that God can use them for service. The disciples started out being taught by the greatest teacher in the world. And then Jesus says, go and make more disciples. Teach them what I taught you. Show them the way. Don't just tell them, equip them for service. Because the truth of the matter is this, we are all part of the body of Christ but we all got to equip somebody else for service because the work needs to be done. 
whether it is homelessness, whether it's food insecurity, whether it's criminal justice reform, we need people engaged in the process of building up God's kingdom. And we as the body of Christ have to be that force. We have to be God's hands. We have to be God's mouth. We have to be God's feet. We have to be God's legs. We have to go where God sends us. We have to say what God tells us, but we have to be equipped. You can't just go out. You can't just say, we're going to go out and we're going to evangelize. And then you don't know one scripture. You get to go out and evangelize. That's why Jesus said, go out two by two, because where you may lack, someone else can be strong. But you get to go out and equip people. But this is where we do it. We discussed this yesterday. This is how we grow. This is how we go from just saying it and believing it in our hearts. We discussed yesterday. You got to believe in your heart. You can't just say, I love Jesus. You got to believe it. But how does that belief grow? Sunday school? Bible study? Sunday worship, reading your Bible, getting with friends. Listen, here's the truth of the matter. We discuss a whole lot of stuff among ourselves. Uh, we discuss what the economy is doing. Uh, we discuss uh, our concerns about health care. We discuss what happened yesterday on our streets. We discuss what happened last week on our jobs. We discuss uh, what our children are doing, what our parents are doing. How much time do we sit down and say, listen, uh, Brother Robinson, what do you think about Ephesians 4? Mm -hmm. Brother Lee, what do you think about Micah 6? Mm -hmm. Sister Robinson, what do you think about John 1? Mm -hmm. I was reading it last night and I got some questions. We got to start discussing the word of God with each other. <laughs> Just take some time out. And it's not to be inquisitive and find out how much somebody else knows. It's about discussing some things to build up God's body. It's about having a conversation to talk about what God's word says. I was reading this last night and it struck me. How did it strike you? I was reading this word last night and it did something for me. I was reading Psalm 121 when it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills from where my help comes. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. What do you think about that? That allows us to grow stronger in God's word because we're now equipping each other for service. Just take a little time and discuss the good news and it'll transform your life. The second thing that Paul says is this. Increase your knowledge of Christ. Increase your knowledge of Christ. Verse 13 says, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. Paul says we can help build the body of Christ by increasing our knowledge of Jesus. Here is one of the more difficult things to get church folks to understand and accept. None of us knows enough about Jesus. Hear that again. None of us, including me, knows enough about Jesus. Yes, you may have been a member of this or some other church for 25 plus years, but that does not guarantee that you know any more about Jesus than you did in your first five years. I spent a lot of time and money over there at that seminary that Cameron's about to go to <laughs> to get my degree. But that is no guarantee that I could stop learning about Jesus. See, just the degree doesn't guarantee that I can stop. I can't say, you know, I got it all now. No, that is just the first step. The day we stop being teachable is the day we stop growing. The day that we stop growing is the day we start dying. So many of the Christians in Ephesus did not want to learn anything else about Jesus. So many Christians in the world don't want to learn anything more about Jesus. We have all fallen into the trap of thinking that we know enough because we know the basics. Yes, the Apostle Creed tells us, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
the maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried the third day he rose from the dead. That's the basics. But you got to know more than that. You have to know more than just the basics and understand, yes, we know he's coming back again. Yes, we know he's sitting on the right hand of God the Father. But we know all of that every Sunday because we say it. But that's just the beginning. And it's not the end. If all we were to do was learn the basics and avoid going to hell, then when you accepted God, that would be it. And God would come and get you. It'd be that easy. God said, well, they know the basics, get them. Bring them home. No, but God wants us to know the basics and more. God wants to, us to continue to grow and to learn and to live. Our lives are to be lived as a reflection of who Jesus is. And think about it from this perspective. If our bodies kept growing, why should not spirits? Our bodies keep growing. Why should not spirits? So we got to learn more about Jesus. And the only way we keep growing spiritually is to keep feeding our spirit. And the only food our spirit can eat is the word of God. We get to know more about Jesus every time we yield ourselves to be taught how to be a Christian. How can we learn more unless we master what we're currently learning? Last I checked, you can't get a college degree until you demonstrate mastery of grades K through 12. You can't get into college unless you master grades K through 12. Now, you don't have to go to all those grades, but you've got to demonstrate mastery of them. You can take the test and test out of those grades, but you must demonstrate mastery of it. So many people haven't mastered this thing called kindness. They haven't mastered this thing called kindness. Some folks have stopped even trying to master this thing called kindness. Yes, they're kind to a few people, but on the wrong day, you can find them unable to show you kindness. It's amazing. They can be kind to everybody else, then they get to Brother Robinson, they stop. How did that happen? <coughs> How did the kindness stop right there? Why did it stop flowing? Because they have not practiced kindness and have gotten caught up in what they felt about what someone did to them because Brother Robinson did them wrong, they're going to stop being kind with him. That's not being like Jesus. Jesus said, be kind to everybody. Jesus said, love everybody. Jesus said, love your neighbor. We learn more about Jesus by learning to do what he did. I'm still trying to learn more about Jesus. And I can't go to the next class until I pass this one. The Bible says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. But now that I'm not a child, I put away foolish and childish things. Increase your knowledge of Christ. Hang out with Jesus sometimes. See what he's thinking. Ask him what you're doing is right. See if God says you should change your ways. Hang out with Jesus sometimes. Learn more about who Jesus is. Be like the disciples. Walk with him and talk with him and let him say that you are his own. See what Jesus thinks about what you are doing. See what Jesus thinks about what you are saying. See what Jesus thinks about what you are asking other people to do. Learn more about Jesus. Hang out with Jesus sometimes. Clear your schedule sometimes and spend some time with Jesus. Carve out an hour of your day to spend time with Jesus. If not, carve out 10 minutes of your day to spend time with Jesus, to learn what Jesus is about. Finally, Paul says that we have to speak the truth in love. Look at what verse number 16 says. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Speaking the truth in love, we grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Paul says that we must speak the truth in love. 
That is not impossible. I mean, rather, that's not possible unless you've done the second thing. You can't speak the truth in love unless you know more about Jesus. You cannot speak a genuine truth in love unless you know more about Christ. So oftentimes we mask our criticism of people in what we call love. We tell ourselves that we are doing it for their own good. And what we're really doing is, is trying to exercise some control over them. People can be very hurtful to other people with words and actions. Our job as believers in Jesus is to speak the truth in love. When we see others not living up to their God-given potential, it's not just about criticism, but it's about speaking the truth in love, hoping that they will be better. When Jesus met the woman at the well, he knew her history. He knew everything she had done. But when he met her, he spoke the truth to her in love. Look at what he did. He sees this lady. She comes to him, and he says to her, let's talk about your situation. Not your past, but your future. Let's talk about this wellspring of water that I'm offering you, that'll grow up in you eternally. And she goes back to dwell on her past because she's not sure if he's going to speak the truth to her in love or in criticism. So she says, listen, I got a situation in my life. And he says, I know all about it. I know about your whole life. But I'm not concerned about your past. I'm concerned about your future. Because he spoke the truth in love, because he met her where she was, because he said to her, I know what you have done. I'm concerned about what you will be doing. She was able to grab some self-esteem from Jesus and run back to the town and tell everybody, I met a man who knew everything about me. And instead of criticizing me, he decided to build me up. I, done, I met a man who said to me, I got a bright future. I met a man who said, I can live and rejoice in my future. I met a man who said he's going to erase my past. I met a man who didn't tear me down like you tore me down. I met a man who's going to build me up for where I'm starting. And that is how we speak truth and love. We meet people where they are, and we build them up instead of tearing them down. We meet people where they are. We make allowance for their shortcomings. We make allowance for their issues, and we still try to build them up. We encourage them. We don't discourage them. We show them the way. We don't talk about them. We encourage them to make them better people. Yes, we know that people have problems. Yes, we know people have issues, but Jesus said the way that you correct it is by living the truth and showing them the truth, by giving them a better way, by showing them the way instead of just criticizing. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciples, you got to love your enemies. You got to care for your enemies. You got to love those who don't like you. You got to show love to those who hate you. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciples, you got to follow my way and let people hurt you and still keep on dying for them. Jesus said, if you want to live like me, you got to take this bitter pill and sometimes do what even hurts you in order to help somebody else. Yes. We got to see how we can build the body of Christ up because the body of Christ is who we are. The body of Christ is who we're supposed to be. And how can we be the body of Christ when we don't like other folks in the body? How can we be the body of Christ when we don't speak to folks in the body of Christ? How can we profess to love God when we treat each other wrong? How can we claim to love God when we don't treat each other right? But Jesus says, if you get to know me more, I'll transform your life. If you live with me, I'll transform your life. Oh, I wish somebody would understand if you just hang out with Jesus every once in a while. Open his word. Ask him to explain it to you. Open his word. Ask him to teach you more about it. Open his word. Ask him to teach you how you can live out his word. Open his word and digest it. Let your spirit feed off of God's word. Cast out of your mind all those negative thoughts. Cast out of your mind those thoughts about your past. Allow God's word to permeate your heart and mind. Then you will see Jesus in your life. Yes, you got some problems. Yes, I got some problems. But everybody's got problems. But we can overcome those problems with the help of God. We can overcome those problems with the power of the Holy Spirit. When we see the power of God in our lives, we will see how better we can be. How do we build the body of Christ? We equip each other for service. We increase our knowledge of Christ. And we speak the truth in love. Is there anybody who wants to be better? 
Is there anybody who wants to know more about Jesus? I know I do. Is there anybody who wants to grow and be better in the body of Christ? Is there anybody who wants to help somebody rather than holding somebody back? Is there anybody who can testify that if it hadn't been for somebody building you up, you wouldn't be where you are now? Can anybody say if it had not been for God sending somebody into your life who saw where you needed help and built you up, you wouldn't be where you are now. We're supposed to be builders and not tear us down. We're supposed to be encouragers and not discouragers. We're supposed to put a smile on somebody's face and not a frown. God calls us to live a better life. And all that Paul is saying to us is this. It starts with us. It starts with us seeing the potential that we have and that somebody else has. None of us is going to always get it right. But we can always keep trying. We can always keep trying our very best. Amen? Amen. This may be your day. Maybe God is calling you to help build the body of Christ. Maybe you think, well, Reverend, I'm not a preacher and I'm not equipped to do what preachers do. But I say, you can always tell somebody some good news. You can always tell somebody what God did for you. You can tell somebody how God woke you up this morning. You can tell somebody about how God put strength in your body. You can tell somebody about how God watched over you last night. You can tell somebody about how God kept you sane last week. You can tell somebody about how God has watched over your children. You can tell somebody about how God got you that job. You can tell somebody how God kept you in the midst of destruction. How God kept you in the midst of unemployment. How God kept you in the midst of almost homelessness. You can declare your goodness, the goodness of God in your life. And when you do that, you're telling somebody else about God. You're proclaiming God's word that day. And all we're simply saying to you today is this. If this is your day to start building the body of Christ, maybe this is your day to come for prayer. We offer you this chance as we look at our invitation hymn, number 246. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now. Just now, come to Jesus, come to Jesus just now. He will save you, he will save you. He will save you just now. He is able, he is able, he is able just now. He is willing, he is willing, he is willing just now. He will hear you. He will hear you. He will hear you just now. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him just now. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the invitation to him. If this is for you today, we offer you the chance to come to God right now. Give God your life and allow him to help you become part of the body of Christ. There are those waiting to help you build that body up as we sing the invitation to him now.
invitation was for you. We pray God's blessing upon you and pray that you indeed do come to Jesus and learn to trust him just now. Amen. It is now time for our celebration of birthdays and anniversaries. We have uh, several coming up this week. We have Sister Dorothy Buford, August the 2nd. Michael Lee, <laughs> August the 2nd. Bridget Clark, August the 2nd. Kenneth Hamilton, August the 3rd. Irving Brown, August the 4th. Sharon Wiggins, August the 5th. And Sherry Smith, August the 6th. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. praise and thanksgiving on this first Sunday in August as we thank the Lord once again for his sacrifice of his son Jesus dying for our sins. And now we're going to prepare for our Holy Communion. I'm going to ask those who are watching to uh, go ahead and get your communion ready. Uh, those who are here with us, everybody has a packet. We have an extra one. Everybody has it? All right. I'm going to make sure that I go slow this time and don't open them up before it's time. All right? All right. There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that blood lose all their guilt and shame. repent of your sins and our love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walk from henceforth in his holy ways draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession almighty God meekly kneeling let us prepare for our general confession almighty God Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, all them that with heart of repentance and true faith turn unto you, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, unto whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus the Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus the Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again, Hear us. Hear us. O oh, merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and ask that you would grant that we, receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took the bread, and when he gave him thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body for which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise at the supper, he took the cup. And when he gave him thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Let us prepare it now. Once again, we know that the, the bread is at the bottom, juice at the top. We're prepared to do the bread first. We'll open it. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, broken for you on Calvary's mountain. Take and eat it. Let it be preserved your, your body and soul for everlasting life. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, shed for you on Calvary's mountain. Take and drink it that it may preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. You have renewed your covenant. You rise and go in peace, knowing that the peace of God indeed goes with you. Amen. Let us together Pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. 
Amen. Amen. We give God praise and thanks even this day as we have had a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ as we collectively Amen. have communed together and we pray God's blessing upon you uh, that you continue to live in the way that God has called you to live. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us seek this week to build up God's kingdom. Let's prepare now for our dismissal. Praise God from whom our blessings flow. Thank you.